throughout this week, we will be looking back at some of the BBC website's most read stories of the year and asking what happened after the news moved on. Today, our sole correspondent Laura Bicker looks at what, if anything, changed after historic talks between Donald Trump and North Korea's Kim Jong-un in June. I have lost a track of the number of firsts on the Korean Peninsula this year. The most obvious was the first United States of Korean summit in Singapore in June. Historic was the word most of us used on the day Donald Trump became the first sitting United States president to shake the hand of a North Korean leader. Mr. Trump went a bit further. He fell in love. He announced at a political rally. The summit held so many possibilities. Did Donald Trump succeed where others, for decades, had failed and get North Korea to give a peace bombs? The short answer is no. We were told in a tweet by the president that North Korea no longer posed a nuclear threat. Lately he has said everything with North Korea is just fine, and that there's no hurry to push for a deal to get rid of the regime's nuclear weapons. That's fine. Problem solved, Aaron. Not quite. Let's remind ourselves about the overall objective. North Korea has nuclear weapons which many believe are capable of threatening the United States. Mr. Trump made it one of his key foreign policy aims to end the era of strategic patience that the Obama administration had favored with North Korea. His policy was maximum pressure, strict economic sanctions to isolate the regime. There seems to be a belief in parts of Washington that Kim Jong-un came to Singapore because of those sanctions and Mr. Trump's threat of fire and fury. But North Korea came to that meeting in a position of strength. Pyongyang's view may be that its nuclear capabilities won them up somewhat with the United States president. And while Mr. Trump boasts about his relationship with Mr. Kim, Pyongyang and Washington have not been brought closer by the summit. They have grown further apart. The short statement agreed between the two leaders was incredibly vague, which has meant the two sides have argued over its interpretation. To North Korea, the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula does not mean that it alone gives a peace arms. The regime wants reciprocal action from the United States. And so far, there is no sign they are going to get it. North Korea also seems to believe that it was given an assurance by Mr. Trump that the United States would agree to sign a formal declaration ending the Korean war by the end of this year. However, many in Washington oppose this idea, as they believe it would be far to create a concession at this stage. Very few face-to-face -face talks have taken place since the Singapore summit. The North Koreans canceled a planned meeting in New York in November with the United States Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, just hours before the announcement. Mr. Pompeo had said he hoped he could make real progress. The United States Special Envoy for North Korea, Stephen Beacon, has yet to even meet his counterpart. The North Korean Vice Foreign Minister Cho Sung Hui, despite several attempts, Pyongyang has also issued a number of blistering statements condemning the sanctions imposed by the United States. The latest came after the United States placed sanctions on three top North Korean officials, one of whom is a close aide to Kim Jong Un. The statement from the Foreign Ministry warned that the move could block. The path to denuclearization forever. It's worth noting that in this series of statements, the focus of the attacks is the United States State Department and not Mr. Trump himself. North Korea knows how to flatter the United States president and to separate his foreign policy decisions from those of his State Department. So despite the first United States North Korean summit, and hopes of a second in 2019.
No nuclear weapons have changed hands. No inspectors have been allowed into North Korea and no weapons. Facilities have been destroyed. Satellite images throughout the year have shown that work has not stopped at North Korea missile facilities. Under one study suggests that a key long-range missile base may have been expanded. North Korea, however, has ramped up its foreign policy first. Kim Jong-un did not just card the United States president in 2018. In fact, before he met any other world leader, Mr. Kim's first trip out of North Korea as leader was to Beijing to meet President Tsai. He also held his first summit with the South Korean leader Moon Jae-in, and a second and a third in Pyongyang, which was the first visit marked by a South Korean president in a decade. Soldiers from the two Koreas have entered one another's territory for the first time since the country was divided. They shook hands, swapped cigarettes. Both countries have destroyed guard posts along the heavy fortified demilitarized zone. This, of course, is not the nuclear ascension, but it is trust building. The Moon administration hopes that this new relationship will make it more difficult for relations to ever again. On New Year's Day, Kim Jong-un will address his nation and outline his priorities for 2019. Seoul and Washington will be watching closely. Many analysts believe that both countries will at some point have to come to terms with a nuclear North Korea, that despite the sanctions and the summits, Pyongyang's nuclear program is not going anywhere. But I doubt that President Moon or President Trump will want to be the first leader to admit that. To Scandinavian women tourists have been found dead in Morocco with cuts to their necks, the country's interior ministry said. Both bodies were found near the town of Imleo in the High Atlas mountain range, near the foot of North Africa's highest peak, Mount Tepco. The women, from Denmark and Norway respectively, have not yet been named. A police investigation has been launched into their deaths. The Interior Ministry statement said, a popular tourist attraction has become the latest Chinese company to show solidarity with Hu Awa's chief finance officer, Meng Wanzhou, who was arrested in Canada on 1 December. Shannon Mountain Scenic Park in eastern Hainan province said it would waive the $9.40 65 yuan ticket fee for anyone carrying a Hu Awa phone. Miss Mann, who was given bail in Canada, faces extradition to the United States on charges of breaking Iran sanctions. Her case has up tensions with China. Use Huawei phones, shoot grand photos on the mountain. A notice on the Shannon Park's social media account said, We wish friends around the world, whose part Huawei success and bliss. The offer would last until 29 December. The South China Morning Post reported that it was met with some criticism among China's social media users, who claimed it was discriminatory. Who are way for owners are being offered other enticements to be can get a 20% discount at a border in Beijing. See in Beijing, bring a who are way phone and get 20% off. Similar to this story we covered yesterday HTTPS. QXL19YPQLPIC Twitter Com Soccer Love End of Twitter post by Atlu Ocean G At least one firm has threatened to penalize anyone buying Apple products. A few days ago, Manpada Shenzhen, based the lead and display manufacturer offered subsidies to any employees buying Huawei phones. It also pledged to fine anyone who bought an Apple iPhone. United States prosecutors, a lad Ms. Man, 46, used the Huawei subsidiary called Skycom to evade sanctions on year on between 2009 and 2014. They also alleged she publicly misrepresented Skycom as being a 
separate company from Huawei, and that she deceived banks about the true relationship between the two companies. Ms. Man, who is the daughter of Huawei's founder, has denied any wrongdoing and said she will contest the allegations. Life of Huawei's high-flying errors. The United States has been investigating the Chinese telecoms giant, the world's second largest smartphone maker, since 2016, believing that it used the Spycom to bring United States manufacturing equipment and millions of dollars in transactions to Iran in violation of sanctions. Ms. Man's detention comes amid an increasingly acrimonious trade dispute between Washington and Beijing. China is angry at her detention, saying she has not violated any laws.